YouTube is it going? The Godals is back with some updated NFL power rankings. Where teams stand after the 2024 NFL draft. Uh, not only my ranking teams from 32 to 1, but I am placing them in 8 different tiers. So excited about it. Not based on last year. It's not even predicting where these teams will be at the end of the upcoming season. It's where they currently stand with their rosters today. So let's just go ahead and break these down. Uh, the bottom tier, the tier where you don't want to be uh, rankings 30 through 32. These are work in progress teams. Um, I got the Broncos at the bottom. I, they had to make some unfortunate decisions and cut some players, obviously. Uh, and then the quarterback situation, maybe they resolved it for the future. They got rid of Russell Wilson, got a rookie quarterback. But where is Bo Nix going to be right away? You know, you're not expecting a whole lot there. You could expect some rookie struggles, and he wasn't really one of the high-end rookies for a reason. Um, so I do think it's a work-in-progress team. Like, this was the offseason where they had to kind of cut down and get prepare themselves for for the future so they do have some really talented players throughout the roster um, but I, I just don't think they'll be quite as good as they were last year the Panthers are at 31 I love where the Panthers are heading I ranked the Dave Canales higher number one higher actually I'm a big fan I think this is exactly what Bryce Young needs they they've boosted this offense the offensive line the weapons I think it'll give Bryce Young a boost obviously the offense will get better how much better will it be uh, it'll be better, but you know, it's still, it's still a little bit of a work in progress and defensively, you actually can argue they made that defense worse while, ma while making the offense better. Of course, it's well coached on defense, but, uh, you know, no more Brian Burns, no more Frankie LeVu. Of course, they added some pieces here and there. If JC Horn could stay healthy, that'll be fantastic. Cause I think when healthy is one of the best corners in football, but still a little bit of work in progress and the Patriots could be a little sneaky. Uh, I am a big Drake May fan. They do upgrade at quarterback, but even as a big Drake May fan, I know he's a little bit of a work in progress. He's a guy that could struggle early on because he throws some balls up for grabs and um, he doesn't have the greatest supporting cast. The receiver unit got better, but it's still a work in progress. The offensive line, still a work in progress. They didn't really add a whole lot in free agency. They've added throughout the draft, but just kind of relying on development. The defense actually is decent the Patriots defense is usually pretty good just looking for guys to stay healthy obviously um do any of those guys like Judon take a step down I think still a really good player but those are the teams that I I'm predicting at the bottom but I think a couple of them could be a little sneaky obviously it's you know, the Panthers I think will get a big boost on offense so it's hard to rank them just one spot up for they from where they were last year but every team got better it feels like except for maybe a, one or two of them um but on in the next tier of teams, uh, I'm calling Tier 7, sneaky teams with some holes. And they could be sneaky good, better than expected, but they do have some holes. The Giants are a team who I have at 29. I want to rank a lot higher because I like the coaching staff. I like Brian Dayball. What he did with the situation at quarterback last year, I mean, making Tommy DeVito look like a player, you know, it, I think a lot, I think highly of that offense because of that or because, because of the coaching. I think highly of the coaching because of that. But they they even themselves have some questions at the quarterback position. They tried to replace Daniel Jones. They tried to get someone else, mainly because he could be injured still. How healthy would this offensive line be? I think Malik Neighbors could be very explosive for them, obviously. Defensively, they add Brian Burns, which is huge, you know, but they – you know, they lose some key guys on both sides of the ball, looking at Saquon Barkley, looking at Xavier McKinney. So it's they're a tough team to rank because they got some studs on their team. You know, Dexter Lawrence, another one. You know, him and Brian Burns uh, should be a lot of fun. But ah, uh, they're tough because do they even trust their quarterback situation? Do they even trust the health, the durability of this team? Will they have much of a running game like they have in the past? So they're a little tricky to rank. Um, if it wasn't for the questions at quarterback, uh, they would be uh, maybe a playoff team, actually. So they're tricky. Uh, the Commanders at 28. They're going to be a tough game plan at first, this new-look Commanders team uh, dealing with this Kingsbury, you know, Jaden Daniels offense. They have weapons. They could have a passing game. They, they have a running game. The offensive line is a bit of a question still. They have holes there. Uh, and on defense, you wish they had a little bit more of an edge rush presence, but Dan Quinn will make this defense better. But there's going to be some growing pains. Obviously, honestly, early they could start off pretty hot because teams just don't know how to game plan for them or could struggle to, I suppose. But they'll have some growing pains here and there, some like young mistakes, um, you know, and they do have a little, a little bit of holes. Saints, uh, Derek Carr could be good at times. It wouldn't surprise me. He could be bad at times. It wouldn't surprise me. So that the little inconsistencies there 
create some issues. The offensive line, there's some holes there. Defense is solid. Dennis Allen always has them playing pretty well, but they are declining a little bit. We saw that last year, like the older veteran guys. They're still solid, but they aren't those elite players they used to be. So maybe, that, maybe that's a reason the defense is kind of stake, taking little steps down. Cardinals at 26. I know they have Kyler Murray for the full season, we hope. So they could be a lot better just by default. Um, you know, So what Cardinals team are we going to get? They were kind of hot when he came back, kind of got a little cool. Um, like the coaching staff, they've added some pieces. Uh, some, of, some of the areas it kind of feels like they're fixing – they're fixing holes with band-aids, not really like permanent fixes or big time fixes. Like they've added some names on the D line, but is it the, is the D line actually a lot better than where it was? I don't think so. I think the secondary could improve. Uh, offensive line's kind of the same thing. Receiver, you didn't have Marvin Harrison Jr. last year, but is it the receiver unit as a whole? Is it that much different? The rotation actually needs some some work really right now. Um, so they're tricky to rank, you know, because of that. We didn't see like the full Cardinals last year, and the Raiders the same thing. They based on the second half of the year, they looked really, really solid, even though they had some bad offensive outings, of course. Um, but was it because there was a fire lit beneath them? And will that continue? Will teams start to figure out this newer look Raiders team from the second half of last year? They still do have some holes. There's some parts of, parts of the offensive line where you you know wish it was a little better. Um, you know, quarterback play, even what Minshew is, you know, how much, how consistent will it be? How much better will it be? It's a different system than the Colts system, which I thought perfectly fit Minshew ball. Defensively, on paper, they do not look good. They played much better than that last year because they may arguably have the best defensive player in football, Max Crosby. And debatable, I thought he was the best last year. Uh, but, and then Patrick Ram's really good defense coordinator, but do teams kind of. Expo- start to expose these things now as they have more of a game plan. So I think they'll be an inconsistent team. They have talent here and there. They have some star talent here and there, but it's a little tricky. Uh, next tier teams are almost identical to me. Uh, tier six teams, 22 through 24. I'm calling them talented rosters, but they are in the early QB development stages. Uh, and they're all the same. I and mean, the, the Vikings got a rookie in JJ McCarthy. Yeah, he's been pretty consistent. He's been a winner, but he's still a rookie. He is coming into a pretty good situation. Uh, Colts have Anthony Richardson. Would we view Anthony? Where we view him last year? We viewed him as a very raw but high upside quarterback. He played three games, was was injured within all of those games. I still think that. I mean, how could you not say anything but the, what he was last year? Like he is a raw quarterback with a ton of upside. And the Titans have Will Levis, who actually played a little bit better than I thought he would when getting thrown in that bad situation last year. So he's actually ahead of schedule, but he's still a developing quarterback that probably going to have some highs and lows this year. So, uh, but the Titans weren't really a talented roster last year. The Colts and the Vikings were pretty talented. Um, but the Titans made themselves pretty talented. They had weapons. They actually signed Tyler Boyd earlier today. They have weapons throughout this roster. They could be sneaky because it's hard to game plan, new look Titans offense. It's not what we're used to, what they had forever. Uh, offensive line still a little bit of a question, but they really upgrade in a lot of spots. Looking at the cornerback group as well, defensive line, uh, receivers, we talked about it. The running back duo should be pretty good. Uh, for the Colts, They be, besides the draft, everybody got better in the draft. But, you know, they kind of... It kind of a run it back uh, mentality from the Colts, so I didn't love that for them. Uh, in the Vikings, you know they have some serious talent throughout this roster. Um, pretty good coaching. It's just the quarterback play. Where is that at? I, I keep hearing people tell me like, "Oh, the Vikings are gonna have a really good defense." The Vikings, they're telling me that. I'm like, you know, I don't know. They might be overhyped in a little bit. I know Brian Flores is a really good defensive coach, but. Might be some growing pains there. I thought that kind of that defense kind of got game planned for a little better down the stretch last year. Uh, still worry about the cornerback group. I know Murphy's great if he's healthy. Um, I worry about the Colts corner group. I think that can get exposed a little bit more this year than it did last year. I just don't love how the Colts stayed the same for the most part. I thought they won some games because the good coaching staff, but Steichen's offense was like, how do we game plan for this? Teams really didn't know. Like, how do we game plan for, at first, the Anthony Richardson, Steichen offense, and Gardner Minshew? They're throwing all these different things at him. Now I think teams will have a little bit more of a game plan, but they're a pretty tough team. Um, I think the Titans got a big boost with the coaching staff and the talent they've added. But those, it was, was an interesting one because those three teams are pretty much the same for me. Um, but we'll see how they end up. 
Tier five is team 17 through 21. This is a, you know, you, do you want to be ranked in the 17 through 21 tier? Maybe not, but I think it's a pretty good tier to be a part of. And it's because I'm calling it the super sneaky teams. And every year I call teams super sneaky. And one of those teams end up being way better than expected. Last year, the Texans were one of those teams. Uh, you know, so I, I think the chances, chances are one of these teams could end up being this year's Texans. And I have the Chargers at 21. Uh, you know, and they got, a, I bumped them up a little bit. I did have my, uh, our, our, our Twitter subscribers kind of assist me in this and try to convince me in some areas where I'm a, a little close call charters. I end up bumping up. So shout out to the Twitter subs, but, uh, end up bumping up because I don't love their roster. They do have some holes. So maybe they were close to being in that range where like, you know, sneaky teams, but have some holes, but uh, Justin Herbert alone gives him a boost. So I had to move him up a little bit. Good coaching staff, we, we think, uh, for the NFL here. Uh, they, they just have, they have some holes, but they have some serious talent here and there. Just worry about that receiver group, maybe the linebacker group or the interior defensive line group. Um, but Herbert alone can make help them make some noise. Buccaneers at 20, they were better in this last year, you know. but they kind of like the Colts, kind of have a run it back mentality, which I think every team needs to find a way to get better. Um, and they don't have Dave Canales anymore, so losing their offense coordinator, which I think was a big part of them, uh, is a little tough. Could there be more of a game plan? People forget that too. Every year, like teams, if there's more and more of a game plan for every team, you know. So, but they're, they're you know, people are doubting them. Maybe there's just that team that people doubt that could they run it back? Could they get even better? And maybe they just do it. So they're a sneaky team. The Steelers, um, yeah, we'll see how the quarterback play plays out. Could be. I honestly could, it's different quarterbacks, but could end up around the same where it was last year. The running game should get a little bit better. No more Deontay Johnson. I know that I, I like Roman Wilson, but, um, and then defense, you add Patrick Queen, Queen, it should be just about health with them, obviously, or with the defense. And this is kind of their range. They, they can sneak off some wins as well. The Bears should be a, a lot better, even though Caleb Williams could have, uh, you know, he's a rookie. He could have like a rookie type season. Remember his kind of big negative coming out was he didn't play his best game against like the better competition. So coming into the NFL, playing NFL competition, could we expect him to be consistently good against that competition every single week? I think that's really not fair. Um, so he could have some slip ups, uh, but he's going to win some games. He's going to make flashy plays. He's going to be talented. He has a pretty solid supporting cast. Uh, even though it's the same, pretty much the same offense line as last year. I didn't really think the offense line was as much of an issue as the fans thought though. Uh, but I guess we'll learn that this year if that's the case or not with that offensive line. Uh, defensively, they they were pretty good down the stretch of last year. It's I'm expecting them to be pretty good, but it's nothing like for sure. But I do think Eberflus calls a good defense. They can be a little sneaky, like new, fresh, new new play caller, young, athletic team that could cause some problems, especially early in the season for teams. In Seattle at 17, I think people are sleeping on Seattle. I feel like people people were going, well, they took a step down last year. They were disappointing at the end. They couldn't win the big games. Geno kind of came back to, you know, he came back down to earth a little bit. Maybe he's going to start getting worse. I see people saying that. I hear, I mean, you know, understandable. I think people are sleeping, though. They bring in Ryan Grubb, really good offense coordinator from Washington, kind of gives a different flavor uh, for the NFL. I think it's going to be tough to game plan for. It's going to be an explosive offense. They have the running game. They have the weapons in the passing game. They improved the offensive line very recently, which they needed to do. They did that. I think Mike McDonald alone, one of the best defensive coordinators, defensive coaches, now their head coach uh, in uh, in football, I think alone makes that defense better. Uh, and they have talented guys. They're going to get Nuosu back. Um, you know, Witherspoon could continue to get better. They've dra they drafted pretty well. Byron Murphy, that defensive front should be pretty solid. So I think that's going to be a sneaky offense and a sneaky defense. I think people are sleeping on them. I've seen them in some rankings a lot lower in this. Um, you know, so watch out for some of those teams right there in that range. Watch out for them. Tier four, uh, these teams, 13 through 16, they're all in the same boat. Like they're legit teams. Like they're, they're good teams. They should make the playoffs. Um, they, they could be playoff like they, they're, they could be contenders to win playoff games, but they do have a ceiling. It's, it feels like these teams like, yeah, they could be good and be better than people think, but how far, like how far could they actually go? Like, they're, can they get over that hump? The Cowboys have kind of fell under that category for a while. We know they're going to be a really good playoff team, uh, but can they get over the hump in the playoffs? Or they, excuse me, they're going to be a really good regular season team, but can they get over the hump in the playoffs? That's what I should say. Uh, 
It they didn't really do much, but lost guys. They had a pretty decent draft, um, but free agency throughout that process and who they lost, it kind of felt like they took a step down. Uh, but starting with the Jags at 16, yeah, they're tricky to rank too because I think they can be better in this at the end of the day. This is where I currently view them right now, and they can be one of those teams that ends up way better than people expect. I do think they have a ceiling though. Um, again, the middle part of last year, they actually looked like one of the better AFC teams there was. Uh, and then they kind of got figured out a little bit. Christian Kirk went down, and that really caused a lot of problems. They were a team last year that barely missed. Like, bear, there are so many bare misses, like on big plays and big wins. And, um, you know, so I don't know if everything's going to go against them like it did last year, but they did lose Calvin Ridley. I do love him bringing bring in Brian Thomas, but a little raw. Um, defensively, they add Armstead. They add a better defensive coach, Ryan Nielsen. So, um, are they a ton better? You know, maybe not, but I think they could be a little bit better. The Browns at 15, I mean, should, you know, d- depends on quarterback health, a, a lot of it, and, and where Deshaun Watson's play is at. Running game should be good. Passing game should be decent. I don't expect like a Flacco at the, the end of the season. Things kind of went their way, and they're they a tough game plan. They switched things up a little bit. Even with their running scheme, a lot of different looks you know, that they brought. They used to be an outside zone team, and they were running a lot more gap last year inside zone. So they kind of threw teams off with that. Um, things kind of bounced their way a little bit. Uh, not with the health, but within those games I, I, in, in the, the schedule at the end of the year. So it's going to be a little tougher, even if they're healthy this year, believe it or not. But it's a good team. It's a pretty balanced team. The defense is really going to paper. They got pretty predictable. Down the stretch, though. They got really predictable on defense, and it seemed like they were only good at home. So what are we going to get this year? They got to they gotta stop with the too much man coverage, so they end up being predictable. So will they give different looks this year? That, you know, we'll see. Um, but it's going to be a much different type of season, but they could be a very solid team. Falcons at 14. As long as Kirk Cousins is healthy, it's a better team than they were last year. The running game should be nasty. I mean, he, Cousins has weapons in the passing game, and he, he's a good quarterback. Uh, you know, so I, I like their offense. Raheem Morris is a good defensive coach. They are lacking in terms of edge rush, uh, you know, but the defense looks somewhat balanced other than that. It just feels like a team with a ceiling. Like they, they should make the playoffs. They should win the NFC South. Like I'm pretty confident with them winning the NFC South. How far could they actually get? And the Cowboys, again, they always had a ceiling. At field, and it almost feels like they look a little worse on paper than they did last year, but they'll be explosive in the regular season. Next group of teams, uh, these teams are all in the same boat. I mean, they definitely are all like this, almost the same team. Tier 3, teams 10 through 12, contenders, if, big if, they're healthy. The Rams, for the most part, were healthy last year. Stafford a little beat up at times and playing hurt in that playoff game. I thought Stafford was sensational last year, and I think everyone thinks he was good. I'm probably the biggest fan of Stafford's season last year. I thought he was way better than the stats showed. I think the stats were pretty good. I thought he played out of his mind and what he did while getting hit and dealing with injuries. I thought he played it, you know, way better than I expected him to play. Um, and I so I think he still has that talent in him. So even though they lost Aaron Donald, I am believing in Matt Stafford and this team, and they upgrade the offensive line. Kyron Williams, the stud, he's got to stay healthy as well. Um, Cooper Cup's got to stay healthy at receiver. Obviously, they they have talent. They have, they have talent there again. Defense. They lost Aaron Donald. That kind of makes guys around him that you know he made guys' jobs easier. They take a hit there, but they upgraded throughout the defense, especially in the secondary, and they seem to be drafting guys and having them step up. Um, you know, look at last year. So could they do it with this past draft class? So I think people will sleep on them a little bit because they lost Donald. They actually made that defense more balanced. I think it, it is worse because they don't have Donald. But um, they're a solid team. It's just a big if if they'll stay healthy. It's it's always you know is Stafford gonna miss? It's gonna you know he's gonna miss a game probably, or is he gonna is he gonna be like out the whole year? Like you don't really know. Kyron Williams, same thing. Uh, the Jets at eleven on paper. On paper, the Jets are much better in eleven. Let's be honest here. But we do have to factor in like how many how many games will these guys play? Like you do worry about durability um, across the offense line, almost the entire off- offense line. Rodgers didn't really have durability issues in the past, but you know, being at that age and coming off an Achilles like a serious injury, Achilles injury, you do wonder about it a little bit. Defense, I'm not worried about it at all. Defense should be very, very solid. But if Rodgers is healthy, which Rodgers are we going to get? So there are some questions. So it is a little risky for me to put them super high, like kind of how they look on paper. Um, and it's also risky to put them any lower in this, which I think most people rank them. 
Um, I don't know if we can fully expect them to be completely killed by injuries. That's kind of been their luck or unluck, um, you know, what's been happening there. The Dolphins, I end up bumping up a little bit from my, my rough draft, we'll say, um, because they are they did lose some guys, but they are talented. And it felt like, two, remember Tua at the start of his career? I know he dealt with injuries, but I, I feel like he's he's really – getting better like I mean and people really don't talk about that enough because the beginning of last year is like is this an MVP and you wish that stayed consistent and you wish he could show up in the bigger games and he can show up in the playoffs uh, a little bit better and just in the big moments you, you, those are things we need to see is he worth the big contract he's going to get is he a playoff guy we'll see but I actually think he is getting better so it would not surprise me if he took another step up uh, they have weapons they have weapons at receiver they have a running game they have weapons there Offensive line's a little bit of a question. Got to stay healthy. Tua's got to stay healthy. Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, these guys got to stay healthy. Uh, H.N. Mostert, they got to stay healthy. Defensively, they got crushed with injuries, especially they, over the years, cornerback. But uh, they were they mainly made when they took a major hit at the end of last year was the edge position. Of course, they added more guys in case that happened, so that's pretty good. Um, they did lose Wilkins, uh, the interior rusher, obviously. But there's talent throughout this whole roster. Uh, you know, do I don't fully trust them in the big games? Doesn't mean I don't trust them. I just can't fully trust them. So I'm gonna put them at ten. Uh, if they didn't, you know, losing Wilkins is pretty tough. You know, that, that's a pretty tough one. Um, if they didn't lose him, they actually probably would be higher. Uh, next tier teams, teams or tier two teams five through nine. Uh, these are legit contenders. I could see any of these teams winning the Super Bowl or, or making a push, making a serious push. The teams below, I could see, but they got perfect things have to happen. Got to stay healthy. But Ravens at nine, which, you know, throughout all of last year, they were ranked at the top of my power rankings. But a lot of this was based on, like, where teams currently stand in terms of their rosters. And if you look at the Ravens roster, they on paper, they got holes. They got holes across the offensive line. Um, you know, they got the receiver unit is not too strong. It's not too strong right now. Um, and you're kind of counting on them staying healthy. So there are some durability concerns. I do think they're a tier ahead, uh, even though they're kind of in the tier with the teams we just talked about with the, if they're healthy, uh, but they're, they're better than those teams. And you look on defense, the edge group, you know, I like what they did in the draft, you know, adding Isaac, but they're, they're, they don't have Clowney. They're lacking in that spot. But look at the coaches they lost as well. I mean, especially Mike McDonald. So they took a big hit, and they do have star talent here and there. Um, but on paper, if you judge this team on paper, evaluated across the board, they are lower. They're worse than nine. But you factor in that they got some star players, and they always play better than how they look on paper. Um, you know, and Harbaugh always leads a good team. You know, they're better than how they look on paper. That's what it is. But they do have more holes. I love adding Derrick Henry. It's going to be tough to stop that. But they do have more holes right now than they did last year, and they lost some coaches. So I thought they belonged at nine, and I have the Bengals at eight, division rival. I know Ravens fans are going to have a problem with that. But it's going to depend on if the Bengals are healthy too. So they're kind of in the same boat as the Ravens, and I kind of put them in the same boat as the Dolphins, Jets, Rams. I just think those teams are just plain and simple better than those teams that were in a different tier. But if the Bengals are healthy, if I can fully trust them, it's kind of like the Jets. Like if the Jets, if I can fully trust them to stay healthy, they're they're on paper they look much better than eleven. The Bengals are much better than eight if they're if they're healthy. It's a very very balanced team. They have a great quarterback. Um, you know they don't have Joe Mixon anymore. I think the run game will do will be good enough. Offensive line group I I think will be a little better. It's not going to be any worse than it was in the past. Receivers are obviously great defensively so well coached they got balance across the board they got edge guys interior guys linebackers defensive backs uh, they added to the depth there of course they'll have a guy like miles murphy could step up you know off the edge from la uh, rookie from last year so it's a i don't really have a hole for the bengals like yes perfect world the offensive line needs to be a little bit better um uh, yeah they need to stay healthy and stop the run a little bit better than last year uh, but it's a really talented team. It's just will they stay healthy? Eagles are a little tough to rank. The roster looks really, really good. Obviously, they have talent everywhere. But there are some questions like how how will the corners play? Uh, I know they added Quinion Mitchell. Um, he could struggle and press right away, but a high upside guy, playmaker, could help the cornerback group. But Slay's declining. Bradbury's declining. Um, safeties they've added there. We'll see where DeGene plays, probably mainly in the nickel spot. Um, you know, they get C.J. Gardner-Johnson back. Um, it's a little bit of a question still in the secondary, even though they upgraded it. Uh, in terms of edge rush, they lose Hassan Reddick, 
which was a big time player for them. They add Bryce Huff. They get better for the future. I think they actually get worse right there for right now. Reddick was a very important player. Linebacker group, a little bit of the same. I think with better coaching, it could help. Uh, where's you know how will Fangio be though? Some questions there. Hertz was much better two years ago. Uh, you know, so again, are they going to continue to miss their offense and defensive coordinator from their Super Bowl run year? Will that continue to happen? Uh, will the Eagles from the end of the year, the defense from the end of the year, show up? I don't think so. I like to think they're better in that, but it doesn't mean they're fully back to the Super Bowl run year. So I think this is more of their range. Uh, but they add Saquon Barkley as well, so bring kind of another element. But they're always good running the ball. So it's not like they were decent running the ball. Now they're great. You know, they're a little better now. Uh, Packers at six, which I, I, I think they're like a sneaky uh, Super Bowl team. I, people are talking about them being really good. I think they have a realistic shot to win a Super Bowl, and this is another example of why this really isn't Super Bowl predictions with my power rankings. In my recent Super Bowl predictions, I predict the Packers, but I'm a there's another team out there that continues to get better, and I kind of leaning them maybe now. But um, I think where the Packers are now and where they will be at the end of the year, I think two different things. I think they're really good right now. By the end of the year, I think they're going to be better. I'm predicting them to be towards the uh, higher, the better ranked part of these rankings. If you get what I'm saying here, but. What's interesting about the Packers is I think the defense could be a lot better than what people think. The defense has been underwhelming, very underwhelming, but on paper it's pretty damn good. And they added a new defensive co- uh, defensive coach, um, and it's going to depend on that, like the play calling on defense. But they got good corners. They add Xavier McKinney to the safety mix there. Um, they got decent like, athletic young linebackers. They have pass rushers led by Rashawn Gary. Um, the interior could be better, but Kenny Clark's an absolute stud, but does, does Wyatt take a step up? Uh, and then offensively, they really developed last year. Well coached by LaFleur. Jordan Love is a star in the making. Will that continue? Because remember last year, he was kind of bad early in the year, or like somewhat early in the year, but then he really took off. But I, I, I have high hopes for him. Um, running game should be nasty with Josh Jacobs. The offensive line just so well coached. They got young weapons. So it's a really, really good team. Do they have the most complete roster? Like the teams will rank in the top four. Maybe not, but they might have a flashier roster and a more upside roster. So that's where I'm at with the Packers. The Bills will put at five. And it feels like they're it feels like their roster and people will have different takes on the Bills. It feels like their roster's w- worse. I'm actually gonna say not so fast. And I but I hesitate to say that a little bit because they don't have Stephon Diggs anymore. They don't have him anymore. So the receiver unit, I know they added Curtis Samuel. Should be fun in that offense. Keon Coleman should be fun. Khalil Shakir continuing to get better. Dalton Kincaid is an absolute weapon. They, they, I'd say to people that say they don't have the receiver unit, I'd say not so fast. They have, they actually have weapons. But they do take a step down losing their star players, Stephon Diggs, even if he took a step, a little bit of a step down last year. Uh, but they still have weapons. Other than that, people actually may still say their roster took a step down. And I'd say not so fast. Uh, de- defensively, on paper, it kind of looks like it. On paper, based on the names that are going elsewhere, that are out. But a lot of those guys were injured, and they're actually, believe it or not, their best. Some of the people, some people will disagree. I would strongly disagree with those people. Their best defensive player was out for most of last year, and that is Matt Milano, and he will be back this year. He's got to stay healthy. But they're, I think, their defense by default gets a lot better with, with you know, by being healthier. There, Are they, you know, they drafted pretty well. I think Cole Bishop's going to be a big time player for, for them. Um, but a big reason they're in the top five is Josh Allen. Josh Allen alone puts them up here. I originally had him in, at four. I think there's a little more complete ros- rosters. Again, our Twitter subscribers assisted me with this on, on some spots where I was a little close. Um, they thought I was too – they probably think I'm a little too high still on the Bills. But Josh Allen, to me, is a top three player in all of the NFL, uh, a top two quarterback. Uh, well, Patrick Mahomes is one. I think it's debatable on who the second and the third best player, in my mind, is in the entire NFL. I'd say Josh Allen versus Justin Jefferson. So you take the top two, and you can throw some defensive players in there. But we're getting off topic. Josh Allen is that good of a football player. He's probably the second best player in all of football um, where he puts the Bills in this conversation automatically. And I think they have more talent than people realize in the rest of the roster. How will the offensive line be? A little bit of a question there. On uh, the top four teams today... Uh, these are legit contenders, but I think they have the most complete rosters today. I put the Lions at four, really solid, complete roster. Their biggest hole was cornerback, and they went out and got better at corner. That 
they added Arnold. They well, they traded for Carlton Davis, but and they and they drafted Rakestraw. But when they drafted Arnold, and those things are great. What I just said, when they drafted Terry and Arnold, hopped right out of the Packers and took him. I'm go. I'm thinking like that. That means more than just a good draft pick. Like that means something, right? That that is a significant. It's saying a pick is is uh, not, you know, justifying where, where that level of a, of a pickup is, in my opinion. Uh, I think adding him with Carlton Davis, and again, they added Rakestraw. Not only does it fill a big need of uh, resolve somewhat of a hole, a big hole, I think it helps them take that next step. Um, you know, so the defense as a whole should play a lot better. They could still have their ups and downs. They'll, they'll allow some explosive plays. Um, they didn't add a lot to the defensive line, but there's still players developing the linebacker unit. Uh, yeah, I guess the linebacker unit's a little, can be a little questionable at times. Like they're, they're kind of relying on Campbell continuing to develop Remember Barnes played more than him last year. So will they, will he be able to take that next step up? Um, be that guy that they hope that he could be, uh, offensively. Yeah, it's tough to expect Goff to play any better than he did last year. I think it's gonna be it's gonna be something if he played better. I, I don't think anyone's really expecting that, but he's solid. He can play pretty well. Um, I thought last year teams could kind of figure him out a little bit, and there was a little stretch, you know, playing the Bears, the Ravens game where it looked like he maybe you know struggled. So could there be more of that? I guess there could be, but he's pretty consistent. I think he'd be a good quarterback. The running game is nasty. You know that offense is gonna go put up points. Uh, they're gonna go. They're gonna control the clock, put up points. Um, they're gonna dominate the regular season. I guess the question will be: Will you know coaching? They make some bold decisions, and it could hurt you in the playoffs. Playoffs are a different game. Um, so could they? That'll be the question. You know, could could they get through that? And they almost did last year. Three of the Texans. It's weird seeing the Texans up here, but I had high hopes for the Texans last year where they could get. And this is where I thought they would. I didn't actually expect them to rank them three if I had to predict last year. But C.J. Stroud already looking like maybe one of the better quarterbacks in football or getting there. Um, they get better in the running game with Joe Mixon. Like Singletary was really good last year, but he didn't have that like breakaway speed. He's quick, but Mixon um, really good in the red zone too. Um, bigger, you know, bigger playability, especially in the passing game. Uh, they add Stephon Diggs. Other receivers are going to, you know, Nico Collins just getting going. Tank Dell just getting going. Offense line is good if it's healthy. They've added a little bit more depth. Defensively, D'Amico Ryans is a mastermind defensive coach, uh, and they've they've added some pieces here and there. Interior defensive line, they might they may have taken a hit, though. That's that's kind of the only thing. They have could have upgraded their linebacker group, perhaps, you could argue. Um, but some young guys developing. I just think it's a really complete roster. The only thing is I... The interior defensive line, interior defensive line, I actually, it may, it may have gotten worse. That's the only thing. But you got a quarterback that could be elite this year, uh, and then you have some elite weapons, and you have a. I think it's a pretty complete roster, pretty close to the Lions. I, I, th- I trust the Texans defense a little bit more. Actually, that'd be the difference. Niners at two. Um, Brock Purdy's getting better. Brock Purdy's getting better and better. You know, at the end of last year when they had their struggles, which was rare, when they had their struggles, it was actually like who who was at fault the most. Like in the past, it was always when they couldn't go over the hump or they had their struggles in big games. It was always quarterback play. It was not that last year. And some people actually will try to convince you that, but it was not. It was either offense line or the defense would give up some explosive plays. And they played fairly well, except at you know in the clutch moments, I guess. Um, in the Super Bowl, but um, yeah, defensive coaching was like boomer bust, I guess, last year. If, you know, if that makes sense. But I think because Purdy's getting better, uh, you know, I think that that you know the the team actually could be more explosive than it was in the past. But they again, maybe they're not as. I guess complete as they were in the past when they, you know, they had like, they actually had like the most complex, like as complete as a roster as you can get, except for quarterback before. Now the quarterback's better and they're still pretty damn complete, but it might be, a, you know, I don't want to say holes anywhere. They're at number two for a reason, but it's again, it's not quite as complete as it was a few years ago, but it's a very talented team with star players uh, and a damn good roster. And the Chiefs at one. Uh, having Patrick Mahomes helps having that coaching staff and not just offense, but defense with Spagnola as well. Uh, definitely helps having a really good offense line, having weapons, uh, passing game, running game defensively so well coached, but they got really good young players that are getting better and better. They do take a hit 
losing one of the best corners of football in the Jerry Sneed, but they created him. They have another one up and coming with Trent McDuffie. They know how to draft and find replacements. It's a hit. I don't think it's as much of a hit as people real as people think, as people are saying. I think they actually got better because the only knock they had last year, actually the offense is a little consistent and I thought inconsistent, and I thought for as good as they are. You know, not really inconsistent. You don't put that label on them, but for as good as they are and can be, that was like the only thing. And I thought a lot of it was because the receiver play uh, as a whole, like the entire unit, that could have been a little more consistent, could have caught the ball a little bit better. I thought Kelsey was off his game a little bit. Maybe he gets back on track a little bit this year. But they add Hollywood Brown. They add Xavier Worthy. Um, you know, I, I think the, the receiver unit is, you know, we'll see what happens with Rasheed Rice. But I think it's... Um, actually a little bit and they could add some veterans for cheap here the rest of the way as well but I think it's actually a little bit more complete of a team and I think the offense the defense I actually don't want to say it's going to drop down maybe a hair uh offense I think it's going to take a big step up uh fresh off the Super Bowl don't see any reason to not rank them number one but there you have it I know everyone's going to complain that their team's number one you know I think the common thing is teams saying like we got better and you had us ranked there think about other teams Think about there's more than just your team. A lot of other teams. Everybody got better in the draft. Every single NFL team, all 32, not 31, 32, got, got better through the draft. A lot of teams got better through free agency and um, acquiring players via, via trade. A lot of teams, not every team. Um, so there's always the people go like, we were did this last year and you got us here this year. Well, we got and we got better. Think about the other teams here. So. Um, again, these aren't based off last year. They're not predictions for the end of the upcoming year. We'll do those in the future. Just where I think teams stand based on their overall rosters today, right now, after the draft, we'll have more predictions for the upcoming season. Uh, pretty soon we have a lot of draft coverage on the channel, like recaps, winners, losers, grades, undrafted free agency videos, schedule releases coming up. We'll have some coverage for that as well. Some predictions coming with that. Uh, but yeah, check out our sponsors, liquid IV, GLD shop, walk the mock code goat for a percentage off links, pin the comments for anything you're looking for. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.